Special thanks to Patreon supporter Brick Bros 2016 for making this video possible. Hello ladies and gentlemen, Scarecrow over here bringing you another Minecraft World War II aircraft tutorial. In this tutorial we'll be going ahead and doing a redesign for the Republic P-47G Thunderbolt. The Republic P-47 Thunderbolt is a World War II era fighter aircraft produced by the American Aerospace Company Republic Aviation from 1941 through 1945. Its primary armament was eight 50 caliber machine guns and in the fighter bomber guided ground attack role it could carry five inch rockets or a bomb load of 2500 uh, pounds. When fully loaded, the P-47 weighed up to 8 tons, making it one of the heaviest fighters of the war. The Thunderbolt was effective at short to medium range escort fighter and high altitude air-to-air -air combat and ground attack in both the European and Pacific theaters. The P-47 was designed around the powerful Pratt & Whitney R-2800 double wasp 8-cylinder radio engine, which also, was, which also powered two U.S. Navy slash Marine Corps fighters, the F-6F Hellcat and the both F4U Corsair. An advanced turbo supercharged system ensured this air the aircraft eventual dominance at high altitude while also influencing its size and design. The P-47 was one of the main United States Army Air Force's fighters of World War II and also served with other allied air forces including those of France, the United Kingdom, and the Soviet Union. Mexican and Brazilian squadrons fighting alongside the USAAF also flew the P-47. The armored cockpit was relatively roomy and comfortable, and the bubble canopy introduced in the P-47D offered good visibility. Nicknamed the Jug, owing to its appearance, if stood on its nose, the P-47 was noted for its firepower, as well as its ability to resist battle damage and remain airworthy. A present-day U.S. ground attack aircraft, the Fairchild Republic A-10 Thunderbolt II, takes its name from the P-47. So yeah, in front of us here we have the P-47G, um, which is a later uh, version of the P-47 with the later war. Um, versions. This here was kind of a contracted out um, job. I believe it was, if I remember correctly, contracted out to Curtis and Wright. Uh, basically the developers of, or no, sorry. Yeah, no, that's something like that. Um, basically the developers of another aircraft, which their contract was canceled, and they basically took up production of the P-47 under the P-47G um, designation. So basically it's kind of the same aircraft um, as the P-47G, just made by a different manufacturer. The version we have in front of us is also the Razorback version, which was specifically requested by our Patreon supporter for this um, build, and that leads me right into giving us big special thanks to our Patreon supporter for this build, Brick Bros 2016, for making this tutorial possible. If you guys are interested in supporting the channel more you already do, feel free to check out my Patreon page. Link is always in my video descriptions, where you can pledge a small amount to the channel every month, and in doing so, earn a video request you're choosing. It really helps support the work I do on my channel, and is really greatly appreciated, so definitely feel free to check that out. Again, link is always in my video descriptions. With that though, let's go ahead and dive in here to take a look at the in-flight version of the P-47G. So going ahead and getting started, we have the large radio engine here in the front of the aircraft. Uh, pretty pretty standard design there, nothing too fancy in terms of it, so pretty nice uh, overall. Going back further, we do have the invasion stripes on the aircraft, which I just felt was very iconic for the P-47, so I decided to definitely keep that um, design in there. So we have the black and white invasion stripes, as well as the stripes that go halfway up the um, rear here, or the kind of more aft epinaz section of the aircraft. Uh, on the wings themselves, we do have some armaments mounted. We obviously have our machine guns, and then we also have the 5-inch rockets, and also about some 500-pound bombs mounted on the wings there to the side. So, just a nice little um, kind of um, addition to some armaments and stuff like that. And we also have a little drop tank on the bottom there for some extra fuel storage. As we work our way back, we do have the right on the side of the aircraft, so we have basically um, a two-lettered designation, kind of designate what squadron this uh, aircraft belongs to. And then we have the, obviously, the National Star Insignia, which was used on all uh, American aircraft and still is. And we then have uh, basically just some markings here on the tail, some white here continue for the invasion stripe markings. We went ahead and put a yellow kind of highlight on the rudder, a white stripe for the tail, and also on the nose here we have basically a red kind of wrapped nose. So that right there, though, is pretty much for the most part it for the uh, P-47G. I think overall really nice looking aircraft, some really good detail, and a really nice impressive redesign compared to our last model. Anyways though, without further ado, let's go ahead and move into the tutorial by beginning with our first layer. Alright guys, so moving into our first layer here, we're going ahead and beginning with layer number 3. Now we're starting with layer 3 because layer 1 and 2 is really just going to be covering that drop tank on the bottom of the aircraft, so I felt it would be best just to go ahead and start from this position and work our way down. 
In addition, if you're completely new to my aircraft tutorials, the way I like to structure these tutorials, I like to do half on camera, half off. What this means is we're going to be building the entire center line of the aircraft and the entire right side. And then it'll be up to you guys to take what we do on the right side and copy it over to the left side. This aircraft is completely symmetrical for the most part. And whatever we do on one side will be done on the other side, unless there is anything I'd say otherwise to do. But yeah, it should be pretty straightforward and pretty easy to do. One thing I also forgot to mention is that, is that this is for the in-flight model only. Uh, there will be a tutorial coming for the landed version, which I do have designed, but that will be coming as a future tutorial, and will be a separate video from this one. Anyways, let's get started. First thing we're going to do here is we're going to place down a row of three of stone full blocks. At this point here, after this row of three, we're going to go ahead and place down, uh, going in both directions, two pistons upside down. So as you can see, we have the two pistons upside down. Now that's going to be only for, for if you're a Java player. Java, we do have a special tool that we can use that will actually help us make this look a little bit nicer, and we'll be using this for shaping. However, if you're on Bedrock or Pocket Edition, instead of using the pistons, I would place down an additional stone block to the sides of that row of three, and then a stone top slab, where that second piston would be. And that would be a good alternative for those of you on a different version. Anyways, though, um, after that, we're going to then go to the front here. So the front's going to be this direction here. We're going to place down a stone top slab, and then we're going to place down an acacia wood trap door, and that's going to make our front. Then for our back here, we're going to place down two stone top slabs, going back, and then a iron trap door like that. Once we have that done, we're going to go to the sides of our, of our stone slab here, and we want to go and place down a um, skeleton skull like that. We're going to go then place down a row of two of stone top slabs. And then after that row of two stone top slabs, we're going to go and place down a row of two of polished and set up downstairs. Come off this first stair here, we're going to place down an item frame, and then a black concrete block in the item frame. If you're on Java, we can go ahead and also place a birchwood sign on the side of that stair as well. That's a feature that's going to be only for Java. If you're on a different version, you will not be able to place the item frame inside the same block space, so just go ahead and place down the item frame. We're going to go then place down a stone upside down stair, and then two stone top slabs back to go ahead and bring that to the rear, and then an iron trap door like so. After that, we're going to go then place down a row of one, two, three, four, and five iron trap doors, and then a second row of five, like this to the side. We're going to go then take our dark oak with trap doors and place down one, two, three, and four, like that. And then at this point, we want to go ahead and go to our first dark oak with trap door. We're going to build three blocks out to the side using these prismarine dark, or dark prismarine slabs. So one, two, three, and we're going to go then delete the first two, like that. So we should have a space of two between this top slab and this dark oak with trap door. With that done, we're going to go then place down one prismarine top slab back. And then we want to place down three going forward. One, two, three. Three. We want to go and then grab our item frames again. We're going to place down an item frame on both ends of this. And then we're going to go and then place down a black concrete block in those item frames for the 5 inch rocket pods. Uh, we'll also go ahead and take this time now to go ahead and grab some dark liquid signs. We're going to place down a dark liquid sign on the side of the slabs here, if we're on Java. And then on the inside here, we'll place down a row of 5 dark liquid signs. After that, however, uh, we're going to go and then grab ourselves a stone block, or sorry, actually a green terracotta block. We're going to go and go to the third from front prismarine block. We're going to place down a green terracotta block like so, and then a second one back. Then a zombie head coming off the side facing toward the front. And we then want to place down a mossy cobblestone wall, go into the back, and then a dark oak wood trap door like this on the rear, uh, closed flat against the side of that wall. After that, uh, we want to go and then grab ourselves some birchwood buttons, and we're just going to place down birchwood buttons around the bottom side and this side here of that uh, green terracotta block to finish our bomb. And we're also going to place down one dark liquid sign on the side of that prismarine slab like so. After that, you're going to take the same thing we did on the right side here and copy it over to the left side, and this we should have the top-down view with layer 3 complete. At this point in time, we're going to go and move it down to layer number 2, which will involve putting that drop tank there on the bottom of the aircraft. So with that, let's go ahead and uh, move on to layers 1 for 2. Alright guys, so moving into our next uh, layers, we have layers 1 and 2. For these layers, we're going to go ahead and go into the bottom of the aircraft here. We're going to start off by going ahead and going to this stone block right here. We're going to place down a birchwood fence gate that comes down from it. We're going to open this fence gate toward the front there of the aircraft. We also want to place down a birchwood sign on both sides of that fence gate. Coming off the fence gate going forward, we're going to place down a stone slab and then an iron trap door coming off of that. And then going toward the back, we're going to place down an iron trap door coming off the fence gate like so. On the bottom here of this first iron trap door, we're going to place down a stone top slab, two stone full blocks, a upside down piston, or if you're on a different version, an upside down stone stair will work as well. And then in there, stone top slab right here. After we have that done, we want to go and then grab ourselves our skeleton skulls. We're going to place down two skeleton skulls on the side of those two stone full blocks like so. And the same thing will be done on both sides there. And that right there will basically complete that um, thing there, this uh, drop tank. 
In addition to this also, uh, we'll go ahead and use the slash give command for us on Java. So we have this command right here, slash give space app p space minecraft colon debug underscore stick. By pressing enter, it will give us uh, basically this glowing stick. By going ahead and going to this piston and right clicking it, it should get rid of that wooden portion of it. And as you can see, it kind of helps slope this a little bit better and give us a little bit of a smoother um, angle there for the uh, for the build. One thing to note though with this is that if you do update the block space around a piston, so for example, we go ahead and use that technique and we place down a block anywhere next to this piston, it will cause it to revert back to its normal state. So just keep that in mind. Um, the reason why we haven't touched these yet is because we have the next layer going on top there. So just keep that in mind. If you do update the block around that one, it will cause it to reset and you will have to fix it with the debug stick. Anyways though, let's move on to layer number four. All right guys, moving into our next layer, we have layer number four. For layer four to go ahead and get started, if you want to place down an iron bar on top of this um, acacia wood trap door, we're going to go ahead and place down two black concrete blocks from it. And then we're going to place down a row of green terracotta that in total is going to be a row of eight blocks back. We're going to go ahead and place down a quartz, a smooth quartz, or sorry, a white concrete block, then a black concrete, more white concrete, and then we're going to place down two upside down pistons, like so, which will look like this for the time being. If you're on a different version, uh, you can go ahead and place down a uh, quartz upside down stair, will work, and then a, or sorry, a polished black stone upside down stair, and then a quartz top sub, as we do want to keep those stripes showing. So uh, there will be a black, polished black stone upside down stair and quartz top slab as a good alternative. We're going to go ahead and place down two stone top slabs back and then an iron trap door after that. Once we have that done, go into the sides here. We're going to place down a red another brick wall on the side that's an iron bar, a mossy cobblestone wall, and then a green shulker box like so. We're also going to place down a dark oak sign on the side of the shulker box. We're going to go ahead and place down one, two, three, four, five, six, seven green terracotta blocks back, a mossy cobblestone wall, a diorite wall, a black stained glass pane, a white stained glass pane, a wither skeleton skull on the side of the piston, and a skeleton skull on the side there as well. After that, go again going back up to the, or actually going to the wing tips here, we're going to place down a dark oak wood stair, then one, two, three, green terracotta blocks back, and then there a dark oak wood stair after that, followed by a zombie head like so, and then a birch wood sign on the side of that uh, direct wall. Once we have that done, uh, we're going to then place down a quartz stair here, then one, two, concrete blocks back, a narrow smooth quartz stair, and a narrow smooth quartz slab back. Our next row is going to be using polished blackstone. So we're going to go and grab some polished blackstone. We're going to place down a stair here, two black concrete blocks, a narrow polished blackstone stair here, and then a polished blackstone slab on the end there, like so. After that, our next row is going to be a uh, row, or actually, sorry, rather, a quartz top slab, a quartz up down stair, a white concrete block, and after that white concrete block, it's going to be another quartz upside down stair like so. And we're going to place down a uh, skeleton skull coming off the side there of that stair. Our next row to the side is going to be one, two, three, four polished black stone top slabs. We're going to go ahead and grab ourselves wither skeleton skulls and place them down on the sides here. Actually, she's rather this one side toward the trowing edge of the wing. Our next section here is going to be a little bit different. Uh, we're going to place down a hopper on top of this dark prismarine top slab, a quartz top slab, and then another hopper right here, and then another quartz top slab back like so. We also want to go and grab ourselves a dark oak fence gate, as well as a chain. We're going to place down a dark oak fence gate, come off this hopper, open toward it, and then a chain coming off this uh, polished black stone top slab like that. After that, our next row, we're going to go and grab some andesite walls. We're going to place down one, two, three andesite walls for the pylon there for the bomb. And then a stone top slab like that on the end there. We're going to go then grab ourselves iron trap doors. We're going to place down an iron trap door coming off this stone in the side wall. Then a stone top slab. And there an iron trap door. And then we're going to go then place down a row of three of iron trap doors. Followed by a row of two. And then one come off the center one like so. And once you have that done, you're going to take the same thing we do on the right side there. Copy it over to the left side. And this is what you should have for the overview for this layer once you have that complete. But yeah, that right there is going to conclude everything we have there for layer number four. And with that, we'll move on to layer number five. Moving into our next layer, we have layer five. For layer five to begin with, on top of this black concrete block from the previous layer, we're going to place down a narrow block up. And then we're going to place down two inside walls going forward, and then a skeleton skull on the tip there. We're going to go ahead and place down four green terracotta blocks back. And then right here, we're going to go ahead and place down a row of four black concrete. You can choose to leave the space of four open if you do want to. This right here is going to basically be the interior space for the cockpit. Um, since there is not much room to really go with, we're just going to go ahead and kind of close this area in, and we will not be doing an interior for the build. But if you do want to do an interior, kind of 
put something in there, then you can go ahead and leave that space of four open and modify it to your to your liking. Anyways, though, uh, going back from this, we're going to place down a green terracotta block, then a white concrete block, and then right here, a black concrete block. We're going to go then place down a another white concrete block, another black concrete block, and then we're going to place down a, another white concrete block. So we have that alternating pattern. We're then going to place down a green terracotta block, then a row of three of stone full blocks, and then a upside down birchwood stair there on the end. And that right there is going to make your center line going down the aircraft. To the sides here, we're going to place down a iron bar coming off this wall here, and then a black concrete block back from that. We're going to place down an acacia wood trap door coming off this uh, iron bar, close it like so, and then we're going to place down a dark oak wood trap door on the side of this black concrete block and close that as well. We're going to go ahead and place down a green circle box like this on the side, and a dark oak wood sign on the side of it like so. We're going to go ahead and then place down one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight green terracotta blocks back, a white concrete block, a polished black stone wall, a diorite wall, polished black stone wall, white stained glass pane, green stained glass pane, and then a light gray stained glass pane there. So quite a few alternating blocks there, so just make sure you have that all good to go. After that though, we're going to go ahead and then place down a row of one and two, the stone top slabs, and then the skeleton skull here on the end. We're going to go ahead and then place down a row of one, two, three stone top slabs. Then one and two smooth quartz top slabs, and then skeleton skull coming out the front there. Then two stone top slabs, and then one like that out to the side there. And that will basically make your horizontal stabilizer for the time being. After that, going ahead and moving into the wings, we're going to go ahead and grab ourselves some green, white, and black carpet, as well as some dark oakwood trapdoors, some iron trapdoors, some daylight detectors, and some dark oakwood slabs for the time being. Now what we're going to do here is we're going to go ahead and start off by taking your green carpet. We're going to place down one and two green carpet like so. Then we want to place down white carpet on the white concrete, then black carpet on top of the black concrete. And then this section here, we're going to place down an iron trapdoor on this top, that forward slab. And then one, two, three white carpets back. We're going to go then place down two dark oak trap doors here. And then two black carpet back. We then want to place down a daylight detector on top of this, um, on top of this uh, hopper right there. And we're going to go and turn this to the night mode, like so. Then an iron trap door back from it. And we're going to go then place down two white carpet, like so. Then after that, we want to go and then place down a narrow daylight detector next to this one. A dark oak wood trap door, make sure that that stays closed. And then we're going to place down a second dark oak trap door back, followed by a green carpet. Our next row here is going to be two daylight detectors back, and or going down, and then a dark oak trap door. Again, make sure that's closed. We're also going to place down a dark oak slab here, <clears throat> and then a daylight detector back, and then a dark oak trap door. And then we just want to place down a narrow dark oak slab here, a second slab back like that, and then a slab on top of this iron uh, trap door there. And then in this corner space, we're going to go and grab his zombie head and we're going to go ahead and just place down a zombie head here on top of the, or basically on top of a block in this corner space, kind of angled a 45 degree angle there for shaping the edge of the wings. Now, one thing I would also like to mention is that on the bottom here, you will have these iron trap doors that do open up due to the daylight detectors above them. A few options here, you can either replace them with birchwood trap doors, or if you have a debug stick, we can go ahead and uh, basically left click the trap door until we get selected open true pop up and then by right clicking it will close those trapdoors for us. Um, so that's a one way you can or those are a couple ways you can do it. Again birch with trapdoors is a good alternative if you do not have a debug stick. Um, anyways though with that all out of the way um, the last thing we have to do here is at this point in time I would recommend copying the right side over to the left side and once you have the right side copied over um, on the left side here we do have um, a slight al uh, alteration which is going to be two end rods coming off this last dark oak wood slab there on the leading edge of the wing. And that right there is pretty much it. Um, pretty simple little uh, difference there. But again, that'll be on the left side of the wing, or the left wing and the left wing only. Anyways, though, that is going to do it for layer 5. Let's move on to layer number 6. Alright guys, moving into our next layer, we have layer number 6. For layer 6 to go ahead and get started with here, we're to place down an iron bar on top of this inside wall right here. Then a black concrete block back from that, a mossy cobblestone wall, three green terracotta blocks, four black stained glass blocks, then a row of five green terracotta. A piston here on the end can also be replaced with a dark oak wood stair. Then a dark oak wood slab. Then three green terracotta blocks. And then a yellow concrete block here on the very end. After that's done for our horizontal stabilizers, we're going to place down green carpet on all the stone top slabs. <coughs> like so. And then on our white, white quartz top slabs, we're going to place down white carpet. After this is all done, we're going to then grab, go to the sides. We're going to place down a... Um, Another red nether brick stair on this iron bar, then a dark oak wood stair, 
dark oak wood corner stair, and then one, two, three, normal dark oak wood stairs, and then another dark oak wood corner stair, then one, two, three, dark oak wood slabs, one, two, mossy cobbles to walls, one, two, three, green stained glass panes going back like that, and then a zombie head on both sides of this block right here. Now, after that is all done, that is really all we have there for this layer, just to make sure I'm not missing anything, and that is pretty much it for what we have. Uh, we do have the banners here, which I will be going ahead and covering how to do. However, uh, the one banners I will not be covering is the uh, lettering number or lettering banners. Now, this, these banners can be whatever you guys want. You can do whatever um, letters you want. Uh, it really does not matter. You can look at actual examples of the P47G and kind of go from there. But uh, for me, I just have a couple of banners I already had made on the world. UN, uh, pretty simple, doesn't really mean anything. Uh, but basically, to place them, they'll be on these two mossy cobblestone walls right after the cockpit. Uh, you'll have basically your first your first letter uh, to left and then the right here the second one and over here on this side we want to make sure that that reads left to right so we have un we want to make sure it reads left to right so we'll place down un like that on the right side there so again it reads left to right on both sides there so just like that and uh, those are the only banners I won't really be covering. Again, you can do whatever number, letter numbers, or letter banners you guys want, even numbers if you if you want to as well. There are plenty of tutorials out there that do cover the uh, lettered and number banners for you guys to uh, use. Um, anyways, though, that right there is going to basically cover that, and we'll go ahead and now move into making those banners there for um, our National Star and Sydney on the side of the aircraft. All right, guys, so going ahead and moving into making these banners. They're pretty simple to make, and really to make them, you're going to need a black banner, white banner, four blue dye, three white dye, uh, green dye, and then this banner pattern that's going to be a flower charge. And that's all you'll need. So let's go and get started. First thing we're going to do is we're going to go into our loom to place our black banner, as well as our uh, white dye. We're going to place down a line that goes through the center with white dye like so. We're going to place that banner back into the loom, remove our white dye, and then place our green dye. And we're going to take our green dye and just do a line across the top like so. And this here is going to make that banner. So this banner right here, uh, we have made and we're just going to go and set that to the side. Our next banner, the star banner, is a little bit more complicated. Uh, this is going to involve us going into the loom. We're going to place down our white banner and our blue dye. We're going to do a line through the center here for our blue dye like so. And we're going to go and then grab the banner like so. We're going to go and then place down a uh, our white dye and then our banner pattern, flower charge. And it's going to create a uh, design that looks just like this. We're going to go ahead and grab that banner like so. We're going to go and remove the banner uh, pattern and also the white dye. We're going to place our blue dye into the banner and we're going to do a line across the top like so. We'll grab this banner here, place it back into the loom, switch back to our white dye. We're going to go and then do the diamond. So this diamond shape here, like that, with white. We're going to place the banner back into the loom and our blue dye. We're going to go ahead and do the triangle uh, that's going to be going from the bottom here of blue. So triangle like that at the bottom. And then we want to go and then do the line across the bottom here with our blue dye like so to go ahead and create this banner here and you basically have your blue your blue uh, kind of circle with the star um, or at least the best we can do it and that's going to complete that banner there so you have these two banners like so now to place these banners it's super simple on the left side is going to be this uh striped banner on this green stained glass pane then the blue banner or the white banner i should say with the star and then the striped banner right here next to it and over here it's just going to be the same thing the striped banner the star banner and the striped banner like that along the side there and as you can see the banners here the black on the bottom should line up with the black lines that would be the fuselage so that right there though is pretty much about it for that uh, national star insignia on the side of the aircraft and that's pretty much it for those banners one thing i would also like to cover is for us java players is we're going to go ahead and use our give command and get our debug stick back or if you have it already perfect and we can go ahead and now take the time now to go to these pistons we're just going to go ahead and right click these pistons and go ahead and revert them to this state here and as you'll see here it just kind of helps bring the shaping a lot uh, nicer and a lot cleaner altogether and also don't forget this bad boy up here uh, but anyways that right there is going to do it for what we have there for layer number six and with that we'll be going ahead and moving into our next layer layer number seven all right guys so moving into our final layers here we're just going to go ahead and actually complete this build all together and this right here is going to involve us doing layers seven through nine so uh, let's go ahead and dive into it. Now, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to place down a red carpet on top of this iron bar here in the front. We're going to go ahead and place down a dark yoko trap door after that. We're going to skip the space here with the um, mossy cobblestone wall, and we're going to then place down one, two, three dark yoko uh, sorry dark yoko trap doors back. We also want to place down a green carpet on top of this um, wall right here. So we're just going to place down a green carpet like that. Anyways, though, after that's done, we're going to go ahead and place down an air brick stair, then one, two, black stained glass blocks back, then two green terracotta blocks. 
We're gonna go then place down a dark or sorry a piston. Uh, you can also swap this out for a dark liquid stair instead. We're gonna go and then place down a dark liquid slab and then a daylight detector like so on the end there. Go into the sides for the cockpit. We're gonna place down a wither skeleton skull on the side here of this um, stair, and then one and two black stained glass panes back, and then two green stained glass panes back after that. We're also gonna place down a zombie head here on the side of this piston. Once we have that done, uh, we're gonna go and go up from the or actually uh, we'll just go ahead and go to the rear here um, and actually on top of the stair here we're going to place down a dark liquid fence post for the time being after that going to the rear here we're going to place down a green stained glass paint on top of this green terracotta block here two green stained glass or two green terracotta blocks back and then a sandstone wall on the end there we're going to go, ahead and go up with two concrete blocks on top of the two green terracotta a white stained glass paint on the back here and two dark liquid stairs back to back on top there to go ahead and complete the tail then coming off our white concrete, we're going to place down a row of what is going to be five of barrier blocks going toward this dark oak fence post. On top of those barrier blocks, we're going to place down a row of five of stone buttons. And then the second and third from the white concrete, we're going to place down two stone buttons on the side there. And we're also going to place down a barrier block right after that daylight detector. And there will be a stone button on both sides of that um, barrier block as well like that on the bottom there. And once you have that complete, uh, you'll go ahead and also take a um, you'll go ahead and also take a debug stick and just go ahead and right click that um, piston like so. And once we have that all done, I believe that is actually it for the aircraft. Uh, one thing also on the top here, we'll go ahead and throw on is we're gonna take some dark oak buttons and just place down two dark oak buttons on top of those black stained glass panes or full blocks like so. And that right there is basically it for the main structure. At this point, we're going to go ahead and also take the time to go ahead and put the propellers onto the aircraft. So for this, we're going to need some polished blackstone stairs and some skeleton, or sorry, polished blackstone walls and some skeleton skulls. Basically, what we're going to do here is we're going to go up from the inside walls at an angle with two polished blackstone walls and then a skeleton skull that's going to be coming up to the side there like so. Same thing will be done over here. Polished blackstone wall, narrow wall up, and then a skeleton skull like so. And then going downwards, we're going to go ahead and basically do the same thing. And over here to this side as well, like so. Now we do run into one small problem, and that's going to be these walls here that do kind of connect up to these um, walls. And this here isn't really that big of a deal. Um, however, if you are on Java, we can go ahead and rectify this by going ahead and left-clicking our wall here. And we want to go ahead and find the direction that this wall is connecting. So for me, it's going to be to the north. And easy way to tell here is if we flip through these, You'll see it, it says to the west, and in parentheses, none, east, none, and then you can see the north, it's saying say it's low, so it's connected at this low uh, position. By right-clicking, we can go ahead and it'll set it to tall, and then right-clicking again, we'll get rid of that connection altogether. And it kind of helps shape the front here a little bit better, and also it removes that connection there, so it makes the propellers look a little bit more standalone. And uh, overall, I just think kind of cleans up that whole section really altogether. And... Um, yeah, that right there is pretty much it for the propellers and with that that is going to pretty much complete my design here for the in-flight version of the p47g thunderbolt hopefully you guys do enjoy this tutorial and are able to put it to good use if you do end up using this build i do ask that you guys give me proper credit for it this feeling from a sign of the build to my channel or this video if this does bring your social media sites as long as you guys give me proper credit for your freezer for projects you guys are working on overall enjoy the build have fun with it and all that fun stuff Again, the big special thanks to Patreon supporter Brick Bros 2016 for uh, making this tutorial possible. As always, feel free to check my Patreon page. Link is always in my video descriptions. With that, though, thank you guys again so much for watching. As always, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. This will be your 204, and I'll see you guys next time.